Yeah, so hi everyone. How are you doing? How has your week been? I'm so happy to be here again today for another live. Saturday, I'm always excited. I look forward to our lives on Saturday. How are you doing? Uh, this is the time when we recap, we talk about whatever it is that bothers us and we discuss, we share our minds. For those who do not know us, my name is Princess. I'm calling, coming to you from DNBC Singles page. We are a group of single people and a few married people. And we talk about single life, how to find the right partner, how to know um, the will of God in marriage, to find someone, a man, a woman after God's own heart and how to do it right, to build a happy Christian home eventually. That's our objective. And if you're new here, you do not know us, do well to follow us on Facebook. We are on Instagram. We are on YouTube. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have a lot of video and lots, lots, lots more loading. You don't want to miss those ones. So you want to um, get those nuggets that we're sharing on YouTube. So do well to subscribe to our YouTube channel and join the group too. We're also on the group. So uh, you'll be able to join the community, a great community of friends, singles, and a few married people, a few divorcees. We are so happy to gather there and talk about life in general and career developments and lots of other topics that we share there. Um, so I have a few people joining me today. I have one of our admin from France, Madame Aukoya, and we also have Mr. David joining us today. And today, as you can see from the topic, we're doing a Q&A. Q&A, what are your questions? If you have any more questions, please do well to uh, share your questions as we go. Uh, we're going to make it really quick. Quick answers to your questions is what we're going to do here today. And uh, I'll, be list I'll be looking at my phone to, to read your questions as they come. So um, without wasting any much time, I'm going to go to the first question question that was asked under the um the q a's announcement so one of the questions that we got was how do you how can one know when a relationship would work out with a sister with um before approaching the mc how will you know that this sister would become your wife before going to the MC? <laughs> oh boy, that's a beautiful question, really. That's a really beautiful question. I want to welcome everyone who is just joining. Welcome to the DLBC Singles Live session. If you are just joining us, we are doing a quick Q&A today. Ask your question now. Ask your question. If you have any question, you can still write them out and we will be happy to answer them. We're doing QA. We're just answering all those beautiful questions that has been asked. So I'm going to ask, answer the question quickly, and maybe our admins will also chime in and tell us um, what their take is about this question. So, how will you know? Look, first of all, I want to tell you that it's all a journey of faith, right? Marriage is a journey of faith when you pray to know the will of God. And I know everyone wants to be sure. We don't like this uncertainty. Nobody wants to be uh, uncertain that the person that they want to marry. And some people are even afraid of beginning to love the person. They don't want to fall in love and have their hearts broken. So you want to be sure that you're not going to be disappointed after you go to the marriage committee without talking to the sister, without communicating with her. And you're wondering, will she even say yes? I just want to tell you that sometimes even the person that you have been talking to that's your friend, as soon as you pop the romantic question, as soon as you ask them if you want, if they want to marry you, it kind of changes the dynamic. You don't, you don't really know how a lady is going to answer when you propose to her if you're just friends, just friends, all of you, group of friends, many of you guys, you talk about everything and anything, career, politics, and many other things, because sometimes people don't agree with your point of view. Um, so how would you know? How would you know that this person would say yes? How would you know that the relationship would work? If you have prayed and you are sure that God is leading you, I would say, 
take the leap of faith. That's my advice to you. My advice to you is take the leap of faith. You cannot predict. You cannot, I repeat, predict whether a relationship will work. You don't know. And you don't even know if after she has said yes, if you guys will eventually get married. Because a relationship is between two people. Human beings are complex. Human beings are influenced by many things. Values. There are lots of factors that influence if someone would want to be with you in the long run. If someone would want to be your wife, your spouse. Some people, communication is key. The way you communicate with them matters a lot. So if you don't know how to communicate, if you notice that you have a problem with communication, people tell you, or you notice that you struggle to pass your ideas across, or you, you struggle to let people understand you, and you think that people always misunderstand you, you want to work on your communication skills. How do you communicate with people? You need to learn to be effective in communicating what you are trying to pass across. Sometimes your intentions are good, but the means of communication, the way you go about communicating your um, intentions, it, the words just come out wrong and then they pass the wrong meaning. And before you know it, a beautiful relationship that would have started is completely deadened, like destroyed. So that's why you have to be careful. So openness is very important. You need to be open. You need to be sincere. Usually people see sincerity. It doesn't hide. It's not difficult to know when someone is sincere or not. Honesty is very important. Say anything. Say whatever you have to say and make sure that whatever you're saying, if ever cross-checked, it will always check so that you're not saying something else to this person you want to get married to and it's completely false. You are not being truthful. If you give a story, you say a story, let it be something that if someone somewhere that has known or was part of that story talks about it, it's not new facts that are coming out and she begins to have trust issues with you. So marriage starts with a normal, regular relationship and it goes on further into um, becoming a lifetime relationship. That's why you have to be careful with all these things. So building trust is very important. Don't be someone that uh, you, even if you love someone, you have to um, be wise about it. Some people, they completely lose themselves and they begin to, you know, behave like, <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> they just start to behave funny. <laughs> I just want to call it, I, I call it funny. Like they just behave funny. And you as a girl, I'm talking as a girl now, as a young girl, some men, they'll just be, they'll be restless around you. You know, they'll just be talking all sorts of things. You know, I think they don't have control of their own selves because they are loose. Emotionally, they're just all over the place and they're not able to control their emotions. So for a serious-minded girl like me, who was always career-minded, I feel like, okay, what's wrong with you? If there's anything you want to say, blot it out. What's wrong with you? So you want to be careful with that. Even if you're very much in love and the love is bubbly, bubbly in your heart, try to manage it. Don't try to, you know, try to want to touch her in a funny way, want to rob her body in a funny way when you have not really, you know, you are not even in a relationship and you're trying to, no, even as Christians, it doesn't, it doesn't speak well of you. So put yourself in check through. Try to ask wise, beautiful questions, intelligent questions about, okay, what are your plans? When do you intend to get married? You know, you can ask those kind of preemptive questions and to give you an idea about when that person and if that person is willing to get married anytime soon. You get to know what are your plans and all that. So you have the trust issue. You, you have to make sure that this person shares the same value with you. If she shares the same value with you, you trust that definitely she already likes you because she thinks that you guys think alike and that she thinks that if the possibility comes forth, she can go on with you in life. So these are some of the little, little things that um, a woman will be looking out for, looking at you, studying you. Every woman, like as, as a young lady, I know that any man could have been a prospective husband. So, um, I comport myself in such a way that I build bridges, I bridge relationship because I don't know who eventually I will get back to, uh, get married to. So I believe that every woman um, 
doesn't know. It's not every woman that already knows from, from the beginning who she's going to get married to. And so she knows that she might get, get married to someone in her group of friends. And it, it, it could be you, but you need to do some of these little, little things so that when you go to the marriage committee or when you come to propose to her, she is willing to say, um, yes to you because she sees you as the ideal man. So build yourself towards becoming the ideal man that this woman would want to commit herself to, I mean, become to becoming his, his wife. So that's my little take on that. I don't know if any other person has um, something to add. Madam Deborah, do you have anything to add about this question? So the question was just, how do you know that the sister is going to say yes before going to the marriage committee? Like, how are you sure? Like, I know some men are scared of, of going and coming to get the no for an answer. So they want to be sure, like, okay, how do I know that if I go, she'll say yes. Do you have anything to add, yes or no? Okay, good, we should go to the next question. Yeah, if, I think you have answered uh, almost everything. I don't have anything to add to it, no. Okay, thank you so much. So the, another question is, what are the major limitations to marriage process? What are the major limitations to marriage process? Major limitations to marriage process. Who wants to take that? Mr. David, you want to take that? Okay, so um, good day, everyone. Um, just um, Glad to be here again another weekend to just share some of the uh, knowledge I have with the family. So um, about this question, I'll just go straight to the point so we can uh, tackle it one by one. Um, the marriage process has different phases. I guess it's different for different people in different um, countries. For example, the process in uh, Ghana will be very slightly different from the process in Tanzania or even the process in UK or Canada, right? According to the different churches that we have. So I'll just speak generally in terms of uh, some of the common things that can hinder the process of marriage. Um, number one can be uh, parental consent can be a big hindrance to, to the marriage process. Uh, sometimes in, in most of our churches, sometimes it could be even the pastor blessing sometimes can be a hindrance. So um, also in some cases, it could be finance. Um, finance can be a problem as well to stall the process. But I would say to every hindrances or stumbling block, there's always a solution. For example, uh, I like to talk about the, the financial one and also perhaps the pastoral one. Because for example, there are cases where um, a sister wants to get married to one brother and then the pastor, perhaps it happens, the pastor in that location, he has one, one other brother that he has in mind for her, you know, it happens sometimes. So let's say in that case, um, I'll, I'll advise the couple to perhaps speak to the pastor and see if they can both agree on, on, uh, on uh, their decision. And if that doesn't work, they can, actually like escalated to the next the next uh, level maybe go to your if it's a district pastor that is blocking you you can go to your regional pastor uh, if it's the original pastor that is blocking you you could perhaps move it up to another region things like that so the, there are workarounds at the end of the day is your marriage is your life they are just trying to help you to get to that destination a bit faster and a bit safer because in a lot of cases, a lot of these pastors know more than we know about the people that we want to get married to, right? So in a lot of cases, they're even giving you a very, very good favor to 
prevent you from marrying certain people, right? So you know, most times it's better to actually just listen and evaluate carefully and pray a lot well. And the other one is um, the money part. Uh, the money part, maybe you, 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 are, you guys are not really ready. Maybe you can ask for help from your family members. You can have, ask help from a society that you are part of. What I mean by help, I don't mean like you are broke, you are not having a job, and then you want to get married. I mean, that is not part of what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like some people want a certain type of level of wedding. And so they don't have the finance to do it. So that's what I mean by help. I don't mean by actually being responsible, right? So that's my two cents to that. Yeah. Okay. Do you think that um, people should um, think of organizing a wedding that do, they do not have uh, means for? Uh, are people? I uh, is a couple meant to plan their wedding without having the means of actualizing that wedding? Personally, I would not do that. But then what I'm talking about is like, for example, they want a type of wedding. Some people want that, right? And they can have it, they can be smart about it. For Okay, let me be very practical. For example, somebody, um, like I know about a couple that they, they wanted the marriage to be a bit grand and they have a particular reason for it because they know the type of people that they're going to be inviting her people that are of value, right? And they specifically held, they invested some money into the marriage, but what they got back in return was quite a lot. Because so what they did is they, they said specifically that we do not want people to give us gifts. We want only money, right? And, and a lot of people contributed a huge amount of money. And at the end of the day, it was not a loss. It was kind of like a smart investment, if you get what I mean. I wouldn't advise people to do that, but, but some people that are financially smart, that's what they do. So, yeah. Now, why, why do you say you wouldn't advise? It's, it's, a, it's, it's a means of getting to an end. So if they want to go like that, instead of um, receiving gifts of a uh, spoon and plastic cups. Well, the, the truth of the matter is not everybody has a social circle that is that strong. Right. No, that instead you, of if they decide that that's what they want, they could also ask all those that are coming for their marriage. Like if you want to give us a gift, give us money. Give us the gift, money trail. Definitely, sure. Yeah, De definitely. So if you want to buy a plastic cup, please instead of buying the don't plastic buy me plastic cup. Or one thousand euro or whatever. Please so no matter the amount that you have oh, given us. Rather than buying a plastic plate or a breakable china or cutleries and whatever it is, just that amount, put it in an envelope. Yes. That's right. Okay. That's a good way to keep that. So, so these guys, they actually use their bank account. They're like, okay, this is my bank account. If you want to give me a gift, send it to my bank account. And that's what they actually use to jack my. <laughs> okay. So, so that was a smart one. Like, yeah, that's a smart this... one. I think I like that. They plan for it specifically to fund their bank account for Jackpot. So, okay. so it, it was wow. a, it was not. They didn't do it specifically just because they want to invite everybody and celebrate the wedding and blah blah blah. No, they, they already got married, right? But the ceremony was to get friends to come around. Plus use it as a way because they have a very good circle. They attend other people's wedding, they give as well, right? Yeah. So yeah. that was the time for them to get back in return, what they've invested in other people. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. So that's a good tip for those who are planning to get married and maybe they're they are planning not to stay in Africa and they're going to travel out. There's no need to get uh, a lot of physical items. You can just ask people to give you and the equivalent of whatever it is they would have offered you in, in cash, in cash value, either by bank transfer or a check or 
the money itself in physical currency. That's a good idea. Mm. Okay, so the next question we have is, um, okay, is it only brothers that have to see the will of God in marriage and tell a sister, or is a sister also permitted to tell a brother that she saw the will of God? <laughs> I like that question. Okay, so who wants to go for it? Yes, uh, for for those of us, for those that are in deeper life Bible church, yeah, at a, at, at a certain age, if a sister uh, he, he knows the will of God, she can uh, uh, she can be allowed to propose to the brother when she's over thirty. She can be allowed. She 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 can go ahead to propose to talk about her leading to the brother. Well, even if you're not, even if you're not up to 30 years, I think that um, as a sister, if you're led and you think that God has spoken to you specifically and you're, you're sure, you can go to your pastor and tell your pastor, I've been led and this is the person that God has led me to. Mm -hmm. And so that your pastor can maybe call the brother and tell him that, okay, have you prayed? Is God speaking to you about anybody? Mm -hmm. And so that the brother can maybe confirm to him, or if the brother has not prayed or is not even thinking about marriage yet, he can, uh, the pastor can start telling him, okay, you need to pray because you are keeping some people waiting. So you need to pray and come to tell me who your God is speaking to you. So it's not restricted to, to brothers, but generally sisters prefer to be proposed to than to propose to any brother. Yes. That's no, it was the general yes. thing. I and mean, in customs and in traditions, most of the times, um, it is men that always go to ask the hand of a, a woman in marriage and not the other way around. Hmm. Yeah, so well, uh, yeah, so it it's it's very important to <laughs> to know that now we live in the this is the Gen Z generation, okay. The Gen Z generation is doing things, they are doing things differently from the older generation, our fathers and our grandparents' um, generation. Now, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. There is nothing, especially in our church. And even if you go to another church, go to your pastor and just talk to them. There's no harm. The worst case scenario, even if a brother says no, it doesn't mean that. You will not get married and doesn't take anything from your, your person. Some women think that they are ashamed and that maybe to make them cheap if they go to um, say that they are led to a brother. And many sisters have been led to a brother before even the brother was led to them. And they keep it in, in their heart. They're just there. They are like burning in love and, you know, fantasizing, imagining this brother and even getting upset when the brother is closer to other sisters in the church and they start keeping malice with other sisters that are very close to the brother their own bro hmm? the brother they are led to oh sisters don't let yourself be cheated sometimes the brother is even like lost he doesn't even know who to marry so but if you give him a push by going to the pastor and the pastor calls him and they start to talk to him and you is to him you know sometimes you you like this brother there are other ways that you can you can you know show that you like somebody in a different way I'm sorry i know we're in deeper life and everything but i'm not saying that you should go and start flirting with him but you can i like the ruth like ruth like ruth, the ruth effect <laughs> ruth didn't propose to boaz but ruth somewhat showed that she she was available to and she he was the next of kin and she wanted to marry him right so don't be shy just be nice to the brother just be polite to the brother and when there are opportunities and you guys are having discussion talk so that he can know that you have some iq up there and that uh, you are good that you are you are you are an asset that you could be an asset to his life Right, you. that you could be an asset to his life. So speak intelligently, bring in your contribution, beautiful okay. contribution. That when you talk, he be like, "Whoa, where's this girl coming from? She is knowledgeable." These are the little little ways that you you leave an impression with people. Okay, and then 
dress well, always dress good. Don't ever be caught like, you know, just started, just looking anyhow, always dress good. So there are little, little things that you can do to leave an impression with a man. And you don't have to be very loud. Sometimes you want to be noticed so much that you go out of your way and become so loud. And when you become loud, you sound lousy and you lose weight or value. Yeah, so I would say just be wise about it. So Mr. David has uh, something to add, go ahead. Go for it. Yeah, I, I just want to quickly advise the sisters that. Can you speak out louder? Uh, oh, yes, sorry. Uh, I just want to advise the sisters that um, men are very logical. So if you've been, if you're using your emotional mind to expect him to do the right thing, he will not do it. You just need to be very direct. I recently wrote a post about how to. Um, to voice out your intention to a, a, a brother, right? Mm -hmm. um, so practically what you can do is, for example, you can be talking about marriage when you're around him, like, oh, wow, um, I'm looking to marry a brother like this, like this, like this. And then he will definitely understand your message. Okay. And understand. Yeah. So that's one. And also you can be asking him things like, uh, what's the future like? What do you dream about? Uh, a, a, a wife? How, how do you want to have a family? Things like that will program his mind. He starts thinking more towards marriage, right? And lastly, please try as much as possible not to. Um, it's good to be direct, but don't be too forward. Because men, we like to chase most times. We like to chase. So if you make it too easy, they will. He will not. He will go and be chasing for something that is more difficult. All right. So be very focused. Give the hints and speak to your pastor. And if he doesn't see what you're talking about, I mean, you should probably start praying for another. Another because, brother, okay, because because brothers like what they like, you cannot force them, right? So, once you do all what you need to do, and it is not working, you should just move ahead. You just move away, ahead. yeah. So, she, she said he just clearly nailed the put the hit the nail on the head so if you have done everything that you need to do you've gone to the marriage committee you've spoken to your pastor the brother is not forthcoming you have been nice you don't have to wait for a brother for 10 years you don't have to wait for a brother for 10 years there are so many ladies that have waited and they are hoped have been dashed okay so okay we're almost getting out of the topic. The topic was, should, can sisters see, we see the will of God to brothers? Yes, sisters can see the will of God to brothers. And they can go forward and speak to the marriage committee if they are above a certain age. That's just our church doing, setting those rules. They're not in the Bible. It's just guidelines that the church places for singles, okay, to help them that, okay, if you are still young, don't worry, brothers will still come, there's still a husband that will come, but if you are a certain age and a little bit older, maybe you are a widower, maybe you are just a career-minded woman, a professional woman that has spent maybe many years studying, and you have crossed the 30s, you're 32, you're 33, you can't go to the marriage committee and tell them you're leading to a brother, and you step, the, the, everything else will follow. Yeah, so don't worry, you can do it. This is something that you can do. Don't be ashamed, ladies. Please don't be ashamed. You can be led. If you are led to a brother already, my sister, go and speak to your pastor. Your pastor is going to find a way to reach out to the brother. And there are some very smart pastors that do some things that I really like. They will do it in such a way that they would have told the brother and then they will set everything in motion. And the brother will still be the one to go and propose to the sister. She will end up, he will end up being the one going to the marriage committee and coming back to propose to the sister, even though the sister was led to the brother before he was led to her. Another very important point, my sisters and brothers, everyone, pray. If you are led to a brother and you're not seeing any, any sign from him, there is nothing God cannot do. 
Some sisters have been led to brothers for many. I know a sister that was led to a brother for like two years and the brother was not seeing anything. This guy was just living his life. He was distracted by other sisters, but she, count, she continued praying until one day, all of a sudden, that brother just had a dream and he just saw the picture of this sister that he doesn't really have a relationship with. He's not even close to her. And he's like, what? This is my wife? Really? I never knew. I'm coming. So I never knew that this is the person that you had that God had for me all the while. And today they're happily married. They have beautiful children. Who would have thought that this brother would be led to this sister? That's the power of prayer. Don't, um, don't um, ignore that you can pray about it. Yeah, so that's that. that we have answered that question. I think we have clearly said it that sisters can go and propose to brothers. So another question that came up. Let me see if there are more questions that are coming on or coming on live. Uh, somebody said, where is the, from my brother's explanation, where is the will of God then? Uh, your question is also clear. There's a contradiction in deeper life marriage system. So if you can write, Mr. Victor Favor, please write out your question clearly so that I can understand your question. I don't really understand what you meant. I know he's trying to say, he said, can we ever have a lady like Sister Ruth in this century? Yes, of course. There are ladies like Sister Ruth. What do you mean? There are ladies like Sister Ruth, beautiful, sound, complete, resourceful women that unfortunately became widows on time. I know a couple of sisters who have lost their husbands. They're still very young with a child or two. And they're still there because I don't know Many Africans just think that if she's if she already has a kid, then I don't think I want to marry her. I need a virgin in quotes. Guys, sometimes those virgins that brothers are looking for, hmm, they are not as good as this woman that unfortunately has had a child and has lost her husband. Okay? So when I say they're not as good, I mean character-wise, maybe maturity-wise. Maybe they're not even the right person for you. I'm not saying that a virgin is not good. When I say virgin, I'm saying a single woman who has never had a child. I'm not talking about virginity, virginity, virginity that never known a man. I mean, a woman who is single and has never had a child, has never married. Many men feel that it's not okay for me to marry a woman that has not had a child. I've never married before. Why should I marry a woman that has had a child? No, why, why not? Why not? You don't know what kind of home God has for you. Boaz was never married. At least we never knew that Boaz was married. And he was a wealthy man. This guy was not married and was a wealthy man. And he married Ruth. And today he is mentioned in the genealogy of Jesus Christ. So God has something for you. God is leading you to a sister who has had a child, maybe out of wedlock even, before she gave her life to Christ. It doesn't mean that you cannot marry her. God might be. God might build a beautiful thing out of it for you. So please don't be biased. That's my advice to every one of you. Do not be biased. Be open-minded. Just like sisters are open-minded to be willing to marry a, wid a widower or even a man who has had a child before. Many women are open to marrying a man who has never had a child before, who has had a child or children before. And they, they are willing to step in and become the mothers of those children. Men also should open up their mind, especially African men, should be willing to open up their heart and their mind and change their mentality and mindset mind what any other person is saying. Nobody lives in your marriage. Your marriage is your home. It's your home. It's your own home. Nobody's going to build it for you. Nobody's going to live in there. People will give their opinion before you get married. But at the end of the day, it's you in that marriage, in that home. It's your future that is tied to that person's future. So look at those things. Forget all these things that we, ch we chase after and we hold on to. They are not what really matters. Marriage is deeper than all the peripheries and everything that you see on top of it. So that's my, my take to that. Somebody asked another question. Um, we're talking about the will of God. If we are talking about the will of God, why having the will of God with the image of a sister or brother in heart? Um, no, we didn't. I don't think we were saying that you should have the image of a brother or sister in heart. Everybody has an idea of who they want, even if they don't have me, they don't say, okay, they don't have me in mind. They're not going to God and say, oh God, I want to marry this princess from Canada. But they say, they have their heart desires. And they say, God, I would like to marry a woman who is 
willing to study, a woman who is professionally minded, a woman who is willing to understand that I want to study more, I, I have big plans, I want to become a pastor of a big international church, I want to be an international businessman, I want to be, I want to go back to school to study medicine, I want to travel abroad, okay? It's not every woman that wants to travel abroad, it's not every man that wants to travel abroad. So you, that's, a, that's just you having a sketch image of the kind of person that you would want to have. Can it change? Can God change it? Yes. You have your plan, but God has his dealings with men. And God can decide to tell you that, no, this is not how I want you to go, my child. This is the way. God charts your life's plan, even though you have a plan. But you don't stay there without any plan and you're like, okay, God is going to just fix everything for me. No, no. You have something in mind at least. So it's not you having an idol. So I would not say you should have an idol of who you want to, you, you are going to marry. You don't go to God with an idol in your heart and say, Lord, I'm coming to pray for Sister Faith. She's the one I want you to talk to. I want you to make her my wife. No, that's having an idol in your heart. But going to the will of God is saying, God, I'm coming to you. I need a woman. I want a wife that you have for me. A man, a woman after your heart, just like the servant of Abraham did when he went to go and look for a wife for Isaac. He didn't have Rebecca in mind. He prayed that God should bring the right woman to him, and God did. That is how to pray to have the will of to ask for the will of God um, without having an idol in your heart. I think those are all the questions that I see popping up here. Um, yeah, so then I, we have one last question from the group that I saw, and I think that we're going to answer that, and that's going to be the last um, question. So is it advisable as a lady or guy to date or court two individuals at the same time apart, just to know the good one? Hmm. That's a beautiful question and a question that has broken many people's hearts. Who wants to answer? From my own point of view, I think that it's, it's an approach of someone that does not, number one, that person did not pray. So that person is actually gambling. He's playing a game. He wants to see which which one is going to win and a child of god does not play games a child of god will not play games in marriage because it's a very important decision and that you don't just stick like that so it's only it's sinners that do that really it's sinners that don't that two people at the same time you know uh, or three or four or five and mm. if you as a person you cannot um, cut one person with the objective of getting married to that person. You want to do two, three. In the long run, when you are married, I don't even see how you will still be able to just be with a wife. A gambler, uh, until, until a gambler decides to stop gambling, the gambler will continue to gamble. So you gamble everything in your life. Every aspect of your life, you always gamble. You always gamble. But there's a, there is a place of prayer and it doesn't show seriousness. You cannot be on a phone or as a brother or a Christian brother on a phone with sister so so and so. But in reality, or oh, sister A and sister B and sister C and sister A and sister B and sister C, they all think that you're going you to get married to them. And in the long run, uh, because you, just because you want to know if sister A will be the best. I think, mm -hmm. How? How are you going to do it? If you're talking about just striking a friendship with us, you want to just be friends with sisters, with some sisters or some, oh, you just want to have a relationship, a normal relationship. No so. strings attached. That's, that's no not now sending out yes. to all the sisters but at the same time. Of, yeah. You are committing them emotionally, you're committing them romantically in your mind, as in that you're going to get married, you're talking married with them and giving their, getting their hopes high and then just for you to for for the guy to end or the lady to just end up hearing that uh so so and so uh, brother so so and so and sister so so and so are going to get married next and next you have been telling her that you love her you just love her, her. I love her <laughs> i love you 
you know, okay. many, many, many brothers also play with that. I love you. You don't love the person. You just, you don't just use the word, I love you just like that. You know, that's why I used to say when I was single, that until when a guy, when the guy walks you down the eyes, don't even listen to any um, words just that they're going to just use to uh, just yeah. talk to you or try to get you into their, into their net. So it's not serious. And that's why some people on the group are trying to see that uh, a Christian or a deeper life member would not ask that kind of question. The truth is that, that kind of question, the truth is that <laughs> even those that are in deeper life, those that go to deeper life, some people do that. Okay? Mm. So we don't know if the person that is asking the question is a deeper life member or not. Mm -hmm. So even those that are in deeper life, they do that. They do that. They, they, they pro some of them proceed like that. Yeah. They don't listen to the teaching. They don't believe in the teaching. They feel that the teaching is not working or mm -hmm. it's not going to work or it's too hard. Yes. It's too hard to go by that process, but they just feel why. When, when it comes to marriage, why do you have to pray? Pray for what? I just, mm -hmm. I just need to know anybody that my mind tells me or anybody that I think is fine enough as, in, as a guy who oh, she's beautiful or she sings well or yes, then you, they, they go for they go for that person. And then mm. in the long run, you caught so many people, you caught so many sisters before you end up saying that, okay, you're going to uh, you're going to get married to, to one of them. And if those sisters are not even strong, if they are not very strong enough, and since it's not really uh, with a Christian a foundation, you know, a spiritual foundation, if they are not very matured in their minds then there could even be a sin can even come in there because yeah you're just gambling you're just playing so since you're playing you're a player you're just trying to see who is going to do. how do you know marriage is a life to, and a lot of things a lot of things changes in marriage a lot of things even when you're married what you are when you are the the first year of your marriage is not what you're going to be five years after your marriage is not what it's going to be 10 years after your marriage not what it's going to be 20 years after your marriage the most important thing god is in it is god leading you is god acts is god saying that this person is going to be the best for you mm. uh, is, is if god is in it then you are safe but if god is not in it then that's where you don't feel safety yes because god is not in it yes okay so thank you so much for that contribution so we don't advise you to double dates. You cannot go to marriage committee and drop a sister's name and be saying you love another sister. That is gambling. If you are doing that, even if you are a sister and you, somebody has proposed to you, you said yes to them, or you are, you are stalling them, you are keeping them waiting because you are thinking that the brother in Australia is going to come and propose to you. Stop doing that. If you are doing that, you are trying to double date, God is not in it. God is not in it. If you are not willing to pray, to know who is the person God has for you. That brother in Australia, hmm? you don't know his future. You don't know who that brother in Kenya proposing to you in Kenya, that brother in Nigeria proposing to you, that brother in Ghana proposing to you right now. You don't know where he's going to be. You don't know who he's going to be. You don't know if he's going to travel out very soon since you want to travel out so much. You don't know if he's going to become a multi billionaire if it's money that you're after. You don't know his future. Let God be in the center of your marriage. And money is not all. Sometimes you think that you're marrying that very lovely money, that, that lovely brother that works in Total, that works in LNG, that works in, I don't know, Mobile, Exxon Mobile, that works, you know, wherever it is that you're looking at. You don't know how that person is going to treat you. At the end of the day, if you are ill-treated in your marriage, if you are ill-treated in your marriage, you won't see the money. It will mean nothing to you. Because money, nothing can buy peace. Peace, nothing can buy it. I can tell you from experience. There is nothing worth peace in your home. Even if there is no enough money, stinking. There's so many couples that are stinkingly rich, but they have a lot of marital problems. They are fighting so much. And there are couples that are rich and they're happy and they are peaceful. You don't know. Don't gamble with your marriage. We are Christians. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Pray about it. Team up with whoever that brother you are marrying with. Marry, you are getting you are planning to get married to. Work together. If you've gone to school, go and work together. Further your education. Work as a team. You can go 
anywhere and be everything you want to be. Trust me, I'm talking to you from experience. You can be anything you want to be in life. Doors will open to you. And that's what the Bible says. When two people, one can chase a thousand and two people can chase 10,000 and many more. So go in your marriage with one mind and stop playing games of, you know, you're with him and you're getting ready to say no to him because the other brother told you, ah, you, you, he proposed to you. I've been wanting to marry you and you, and you start behaving funny to that brother because you want to chase him away. You just want to have problem in that courtship just because you are, you are, you are, you are um, eyeing that brother. So I want to thank everybody that is connected here. Kwesi Billy, Kwesi Bill, thank you for connecting. Gwen Favor, thank you for connecting. Olumide Boboye, Blay Williams, Victor Favor, I'm still going to answer your question. And we have Promise Akban, I'm going to answer your question. Jeremiah Ibitoye, uh, Isong Joe, I'm so happy to see you guys here. Um, Aditola Adeola, I'm so happy to see you. Aminata Sako, Hello, I'm so happy to see you, big boy, Moses, I'm so happy to see you, Moses, Victor Favor, I'm happy to see you, and um, Omara, Eliezer, uh, Ope, yeah. I don't know if I said your name the right way, please excuse me if I didn't say the way, right way, and when favor de Dieu, bonjour, bonjour, we on part français ici aussi. We speak French here too. If you have a question in French, you can write it. Si vous avez une question en français, écrivez la question et euh, je serai ravi de répondre à votre question. Et on va l'interpréter en même temps pour ceux qui parlent anglais. So sorry, I said it in French, that if he had a question in French, he can ask his question and then we'll be happy to answer and interpret it to our English listeners. Yes, so I, I have another question. I know we, we were supposed to be at the end of the questions, but because you guys are here today, I'm going to indulge you. So this question says, and I'm just saying it directly from, I'm just reading it from the comment section. Okay, so he said, Jeremiah Ibito, he said, uh, I love this. Okay, yes, this is our first Q&A. Yeah, we had a couple of Q&A, but this is the first official one. <laughs> yeah, so you said, I want to know if it's possible for a sister to give a brother yes, and afterward, no. What might make it possible? Hmm. That's a beautiful question. Thank you for asking that question. <sighs> a sister can say yes and eventually say no. And that's the place of courtship. During the courtship, your courtship time is when you determine if you're going to go on with this marriage or not. If you, this is the person you want to get married to and this is the person you want to spend the rest of your life with. Conversations happen. Disagreements can happen. Some people might not be expressive, like vocal, but you might have said something that will trigger them and they might not say anything to you depending on their temperament and they make up their mind that that's it, I'm done. I'm not doing this again. I'm not going to marry this guy. He's not my kind of guy. Maybe you yell at them. Maybe you are not agreeing on, on a point. It looks like your visions and your values are different. That, those are some of the reasons why a sister will say yes to you and come around and say no during courtship after saying yes. There's so many reasons why someone would want to marry you and eventually say no. And sometimes people say yes, first of all, because they feel, oh, thank God, somebody has proposed to me. And then they start getting cold feet and they feel, no, I don't really love this person. I just can't see myself loving them. And they're doing you a favor if they say no to you at that point in time. If they don't love you and they eventually say no to you, they've done you a favor. They have opened the door for you to find the right person for you. There are many other reasons. This is a question that can go either with different ways there. We're going to, I think we're gonna, we're gonna ask this, answer this question again in with more details because we, we are we're kind of out of time now. I think, I hope that answers your question. Um, promise, please let me know if that answer answers your question. So there's a lot of things that can make it possible and don't, don't be, don't despair. Don't think that because she said no to you, you are not good enough. No, I say, brother, please, you are still good enough. You're just not her man. And there's always a beautiful woman, an ideal woman for you. And if it's a woman, eventually the guy is proposed to you and says he's taking back his proposal. Doesn't mean that you're not enough. You're just not his woman. God has the best for you. You know this song? God has got a plan for me. No matter the circumstances, even the things I don't understand, God has got a plan for me. So um, 
I love that song. I listen to it and I'm throwing it to you, encouraging you guys that God has got a plan for you. Don't mind the circumstance. He's going to bring it. God has good plans for you and he's going to bring you into your desired home in Jesus' name. Amen. Another thing I would like to add is that if for example, you start a courtship and the person uh, decides to go off, uh, to end it, you can ask the person, what's the reason why you felt that you can continue in this marriage with me? So that the person can give you feedback and maybe it's something that you really need to work on in your life. And that could help you in your next relationship. Okay, so that's what I wanted to add. Okay, all right. So um, um, that's thank you so much for your for your answer. Uh, so I have this other question that I think we should answer also. Um, here it says, <laughs> "That's a beautiful question that this person is asking. Why would our rich sisters <laughs> not accept a truck pusher as the will of God?" <laughs> Choice. Choice is my answer. It's a choice. Marriage is a choice. And also, you don't know if they're led to you. If a rich sister is not led to a truck pusher, the truck pusher should not hate her or be upset because she doesn't want to marry him. Don't worry. So, Mr. David has an answer. Go ahead. I give you the answer, then I can continue. Okay. So, uh, yeah. I just say from the man's point of view, um, you have to understand that as much as we are believers, women and men function differently, right? We are still human beings that have feelings and have emotional states, right? The emotional state of a woman, she wants to feel safe in a man that she wants to get married to. The emotional state of a man he wants to know that a woman is going to give him the respect that he deserves. Now, it is very possible for a rich sister to marry a truck driver, provided that she knows that that truck driver is not just thinking to just stay as a truck driver. He's thinking to be a CEO of truck, um, a, a fleet of trucks, right? He's mm. thinking bigger than his situation. So it's very possible for a sister to actually that is rich, that will see a truck driver and say, wow, I want to get married to this man. Another reason for a rich sister to say she wants to get married to a truck driver could be that that man just gives her a complete sense of peace and a complete sense of um, comfort. She knows that if she speaks to this guy, she just feel um, very relaxed. She feel listen to so it's possible so the problem the the question is not that the sister does not want to get married to a truck driver the problem is the truck driver is not selling it himself correctly it's sister right as much as possible that we are talking about praying for the will of god if you don't if you're not doing your part if you're not using the tips and tricks that are outlined in proverbs you will not be a complete Christian that will attract the right uh, partner for, 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 for you. So, my brother, it's not that sisters don't like truck drivers. It's just that sisters don't like to feel insecure. That's all. You make yourself a valuable man, a responsible man. Whether you're a cleaner, you're a truck driver, you will still attract a woman that is rich. And you yourself, you should start thinking big, not just thinking truck driving. Thank you. Thank you so much for that response. Thank you very much. That's a beautiful answer from a brother, a brother to another brother. <laughs> I hope you're blessed. I hope that answers your question, um, brother Victor, Victor Fever. Okay. And this person, Nada, is asking a question. He says that um, I joined this late and it's educational, especially for a non deep alive member. Oh, good to see you. <laughs> Please clarify, how long does the average waiting time take for the church to preview your letter of intent and get and, and get or and give feedback? Thank you. Okay. Um, now it depends 
from one district church to another district church. So if you have sent a letter of intent, uh, I don't have a time frame because there's never a time frame in black and white. So it depends on the district, it depends on the country, it depends on your location. So if you think that there is a delay, I always tell people follow up is important. If you're applying for a job and they don't get back to you, you try to write them an email and say, okay, what's going on with my job application until you get an answer. So if you have not gotten an answer, you can try if you're using your pastor or you, uh, you wrote them directly or you know the district church, you know the local church, you can walk down there. If you're living outside of the country, you can just write another email, follow-up email to ask. The Bible says, ask and you shall receive. You remember that person that was knocking at his neighbor's door asking for something and the neighbor was like, I'm in bed with my family, don't disturb me, please, I'm sleeping. And he kept knocking, he kept knocking, he kept knocking, right? Even though the neighbor didn't want to open, he opened the door for him because he wouldn't stop knocking. In importunity, you have to be persistent. Don't lose hope, you know what you want to marry, you know who you are looking at, you know who you want to marry. Look at the end goal. Don't mind the challenges and the obstacle that might come on the way because you know that beautiful sister that you want to marry. Don't get discouraged because of whatever roadblocks that may come for whatever reason, which I don't know. I can't give you all because if I do, I'll, I'll be deceiving you. I don't know all the answers to why there will be a certain delay of maybe two months, three months, or one month, or one week. People, for, for the fact that a friend of yours got an answer faster than you doesn't mean that it doesn't mean that um, there's anything personal between that pastor and yourself. And if in doubt, ask question. Call up that person, ask them. I've requested or I've made an application. I've written an, an intent to marry this person. I've not heard anything from you. Is there a reason for that? So that's a simple answer that I would give. I don't, I don't, think, that, I don't think that there's any hard and fast rule. Ask them, ask. And always, and always when you're asking or when you're on the phone or you're in call, always be polite polite, be polite. Mm. you don't talk to the person that you have on phone or in your letter even if you are not happy you don't become impolite because it mm. even shows it shows a wrong signal yeah to the pastor that's going to treat your request that ah if this if this man can talk to me like this what's going to do to our sister that he wants to get married to right right yeah. Thank you so much for that answer. Gwen Favre de Dieu is asking a question in French. Guys, you that, list, that are listening to us in English, we've always spoken in English. We're going to switch to French a little bit and we're going to interpret the answer to you. We'll interpret the answer and the question to you. <laughs> so sorry, please hold on. Don't go. Don't go. So Gwen Favre est en train de demander, je suis vraiment sûr que le frère est la volonté de Dieu, mais je ne l'aime pas. Comment faire? Je suis sûr que le frère est la volonté de Dieu, mais je ne l'aime pas. Hmm. Moi, ma question sera, mais je, je souhaite te répondre directement, mais ma question est, est de savoir comment est-ce que tu définis l'amour? C'est quoi l'amour pour toi? OK, so I'm going to interpret, OK? Okay, Let me okay. so ahead. the question was, uh, her question was, I'm very sure that this is the will of God for me, that the brother is the will of God for me, but I don't love him. What should I do? Okay, go ahead. Donc, donc uh, quand, tu, quand tu écris en disant que tu ne l'aimes pas, tu ne l'aimes pas, parce que tu ne l'imagines pas, uh, ton mari, tu ne le supportes pas, euh, en tant que personne, en fait, pourquoi tu dis que tu, tu ne l'aimes pas Et il faut savoir que l'amour est parfois un sentiment euh, instable. Okay? Parce que si c'est juste un sentiment, il y a des personnes qui tombent amoureuses, il y a des personnes qui tombent amoureuses d'une autre personne. Et qu'après un an ou après un mois ou après six mois, ils disent que je, je ne l'aime plus. En fait, comment est-ce que tu, comment peux-tu euh, décrire cela? Comment, comment peux-tu euh, comprendre cela? C'est pour cela 
que l'amour en, en tant que tel est parce que c'est une personne que tu n'imagines pas vivre, passer le reste de ta vie avec. Est-ce ça? Est-ce une personne que, par sa manière de parler, son comportement te repousse? Si c'est ça, peut-être il faut en parler avec la personne et peut-être la personne changera et ça pourra t'attirer. Si, si tu ne l'aimes pas parce qu'il ne s'habille pas, il, parce que parfois, nous les femmes, on n'aime pas, on dit qu'on n'aime pas une personne. On, il y a des multiples raisons. Parfois, on n'aime pas la personne juste à cause de la manière dont il s'habille. En fait, tu trouves qu'il est rangard. Il oui. n'est pas bien habillé. C'est une personne qui ne se présente pas bien. Et je ne veux pas m'associer à, à, à cette personne. Là, tu dis que je ne l'aime pas. Mais ce n'est pas la personnalité. Ce n'est pas vraiment la personne que tu n'aimes pas. Mm -hmm. Mais c'est son habillement. Et ça, c'est quelque chose qui peut... On peut travailler sur ça. Oui. Ça peut changer. Sauf mm -hmm. si tu parles avec cette personne ou que tu... Oh, well, yeah. Sorry. We are asking a question from someone, a francophone, a French person who asked the question and we're interpreting. So all those who are joining, we are speaking French right now. We're just answering the question of a French um, participant today and then we're interpreting the answer to you. Okay? Oui. So hold on. Et une autre chose, si tu as déjà parlé avec cette personne, c'est par rapport à l'habillement et la personne ne change pas, peut-être qu'il faut parler avec d'autres personnes pour que ces autres personnes lui parlent pour qu'il pour qu change. Mais une autre euh, solution à, à cette situation est de, est de prier. OK? Il faut prier et tu demandes au Seigneur, Seigneur, tu, tu m'as révélé cette personne où je suis sûre que c'est la volonté de Dieu pour moi, c'est ta volonté. Je, vais pas, je ne peux pas m'imaginer avec cette personne pour le reste de ma vie. Est-ce que tu peux faire quelque chose touche mon cœur. Mets l'amour dans mon cœur. Mets l'amour dans mon cœur pour cette personne. Oui. Et, et, et peut-être avec cette prière, tu pourras commencer à voir, tu pourras découvrir certaines choses que tu n'arrivais pas à découvrir et qui faisaient en sorte que tu, tu ne l'aimais pas. D'accord. OK. Yeah. Mais la volonté de Dieu, il, il, je ne, moi, je ne crois pas que Dieu peut mettre dans... Dieu peut te donner une personne pour être ton époux sans te donner l'amour pour cette personne. Oui, ça c'est vrai. OK, correct. Yeah, so the, the answer was this. Why don't you like him? Why don't you love him? Is it because of the way he dresses? Is it because of the way he speaks? Is it because of his attitude? Or is it just the personality? So if you do not love him, because of the way he dresses, because he's raggedy, he doesn't dress well, he's not presentable. These are things that we can work on, okay? These are things that we can work on. And because as women, we look at some of these simple things, like how does this guy look? And some women get repulsed by the bad dressing and bad presentation. And maybe the man doesn't brush his teeth well and his, his mouth is always smelling. He doesn't perfume himself and he smells so bad. I mean, it could be also from a woman's perspective, but we're talking because apparently it's a woman that's asking the question. So maybe that's, those are things that you are seeing that makes you feel that even though you are sure that he's the will of God for you, you don't love him, but these are things that we can work on. We can work on it. And he can always change his dressing. He can change that perfuming himself and do all, all these things that needs to be done um, for that repulsiveness to go away. But... If you do not love him in spite of that, it's just the personality. Her answer was that you can also go to God and ask God, you gave me this man and you're saying that is the will of God for me. What can you do about this? Put the love in my heart. If I would and have to marry this man, I need to love him first before I can proceed with this marriage process. So, Thank you very much. So Gwen Favor said thank you. Merci beaucoup. J'ai retenu que c'est certain de ces habitudes que je n'aime pas. Merci bien, Madame Gwen. Uh, so Gwen Favor is happy and is grateful for this answer that she got. So she's she's fine with the question. Uh, so another question, and that's the last question we're going to go with. Um, what should be done if you notice pride? I mean, pride at the highest level in the so-called will of God's life. Wow. 
David, you want to take the answer? If you notice pride, just really brief. If you notice pride in someone that you are led to, what should you do? David, are you there? If you notice pride in the in question the is if you notice to. if you notice pride in the person that you're led to, what, what should, should you, you do? do? Yes. Ah. Well, I don't know. Sometimes people that are very reserved, they come across as being proud in most cases. So maybe in the case of this person is you, you perhaps don't understand their personality just yet. So she said perhaps, pride at the highest level. Pride at the highest level. I think we need more context to this question because <laughs> okay. it's coming from somewhere. Okay. But I just want to speak on a general level based on human uh, interaction, right? Uh, I have had friends where before I knew them, I used to take them as snobs and proud people. But not knowing that those people are just generally just quiet people and reserved people and they want to keep their circle very very small mm -hmm. and until i get to know them like get to talk to them and them getting to know me before opening up just looking at them from distance they they, they feel to me as composed and proud people mm -hmm. including sisters right so i would suggest that you need to perhaps learn a bit of communication skills on how to talk to different personality types. Mm -hmm. There are people that are naturally very, very bubbly, while there are some other people that are very reserved and quiet. They will not talk to you openly or freely until they get to really know you and get to get comfortable with you. So I think short answer is get to know people before you really conclude that they are, they are so proud. And if for her, for her venture, that person is just really, really proud. I mean, <laughs> it's up to you. Why, why are you, um, if you're bothered by that type of person, I think you should question your attraction to that person, right? Yes. Uh, so that's just why I, I, I feel that you can do. Thank you. Thank you for that answer. Yeah, so, uh, so you got it already. Approach the person, get to know the person more. And sometimes the person you thought is proud might not really be proud. It's just that they are reserved and they want to keep their circle of friends very small. So now for this sister beloved that is adding more content and saying that she approached him about he, this and he accepted that he's really proud and is an extrovert with his shoulder always high. Okay, then this is a proud person. The Bible said, I think it's somewhere in Psalms, with a proud person, I will not go. So my dear sister, if he's proud, pompous, looks down on you, talk down on you, just drags you and treats you like you're nothing, like you're a rag. Girl, move on. He's not going to change. He is not going to change. If he's, not, if he's so proud and pompous and everybody is just nothing to him, then I think you should, you should um, reconsider. You should pray. You should pray again. You don't, don't deceive yourself. If he treats you bad, really treating you bad, talks down on you, can yell at you in the public, has no regard for you, as a person, oh, my sister, you're in the, you're in the wrong boat. You need, to, you, you need to sail to another boat. You're not in the right place. Yes, David, you wanted to add something quickly. Yeah, so I just wanted to add that the only reason why somebody will be proud or will act in a very weird way towards you is because they don't find you valuable. They don't find you, you valuable. Not, okay. Yes, you, you will not talk down on your director or your manager, right? Yes. Or somebody that you feel like you are on the you same respect. level you respect so that means there is a value problem here you need there's a value up, problem yeah you need to upgrade your value how that person perceives you maybe you are you are you are, you are bringing yourself too low maybe you are very very available to that person you need to become scarce you need to uh, perhaps distance yourself from that person maybe you need to uh, portray a, a bit more of a personality that everybody wants to be around, you know? Yeah, then but the truth is that someone with this personality flaw, and we're talking about a married relationship, he's not a Christian. And if he's proud, 
However, you try to, for the time of courtship, if you try not to interact with him, or you try to make him make it make yourself scars and whatever. Now in the marriage, you're no more. You cannot run away from. There's no way to run, right? Yeah. Because before you no, get for me, I don't. I don't believe. I don't believe in the context of, of 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 marriage that that person is proud. I just believe that that person does not just see value enough to respect you. He doesn't you see any value as, in you. Yeah, that's the point. As as, as a partner. Yeah. So, once that person is able to see value in you, they will change their behavior towards you. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Another thing also oh. is that some ladies they don't um they don't value themselves. They don't value themselves. I mean, no matter what anybody, any man has, no matter his money, his status, he's just a human being after all. Man as at his best is all together dust. We are all human beings. It's just chance and favor that happens to them all. So if he's lucky to have gotten, or he's, he, he did the job, he worked, and he has become whatever it is he, he is, you can build on yourself. That's number one. Number two, respect your own self. Value your own self. And what, how you look at, how you perceive yourself, it reflects out to people. People notice it. You, you wouldn't know when you, your courage, it will show in your courage. Okay, so build on yourself. What it is you need to do to make yourself stand tall as you journey towards greatness? Work on yourself. Once you work on yourself, girl, when you come into a room, they don't sense pride. They sense a woman that has confidence, a woman that has value, a woman that knows her ex, a woman that knows what, where she's going to in life. Every man wants to have that woman in his life. So I think that's the end of our life. I'm not going to answer any more questions, guys. We need to jump out of here. Thank you so much, beloved Debbie. Thank you. We are welcome for that answer. Somebody, Victor Favor, said you should run. <laughs> so thank you so much for hanging in there. Everybody who connected today, I hope you were blessed by this Q&A. And let us know if you want to have more Q&As like that. Say it, say it, say it, say it in the comment section. Put your, put your like, love, appreciation. Yes, we want more. Yes, we want more. Let us know. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow this page, DLBC Singles for more content like this one. See you next time. On this note, we're going to face out. We're going to get out of here. And we hope that you have a splendid week ahead. And God give us an answer of peace. Merci beaucoup pour tous ceux qui, tous ceux qui ont connecté. Que Dieu vous bénisse. Et à la prochaine, amenez vos questions. Si vous aimez la, les réponses qu'on a données, um, Mettez un, un emoji, j'aime. Et si vous voulez plus de ceci, s'il vous plaît, indiquez dans la, la session des commentaires que vous voulez qu'on fasse encore des questions et des réponses comme celle-là. Merci. Et passez une belle journée, un beau week-end. Et à la prochaine. Thank you so much. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye. And thank you for all our facilitators, Mr. David and Madame Deborah. Thank you for thank your time. You. God bless you. You too. Right.